Hi, I'm Sally. And I'm Ray. And this is our second vlog as participants with the South African Shark Conservancy Women in Shark Science Month. Today, we'll be talking about the mating sequence of the scalloped hammerhead shark. The scientific paper we're discussing is First observation on the mating behaviour of the endangered scalloped hammerhead shark in the tropical eastern Pacific found in Environmental Biology of Fishes. The scalloped hammerhead has a worldwide distribution across temperate, subtropical and tropical waters. Sadly, they're listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. In the tropical eastern Pacific, Hammerheads form large schools around the isolated oceanic islands of Ecuador, Colombia and Costa Rica. Hammerheads from these aggregations are known to migrate between these oceanic islands as well as to popping grounds in coastal mangrove forests in mainland areas. Various hypotheses have been put forward to explain these seasonal congregations including refuging behaviour, increased food availability, maximization of exposure to the services of cleaner fishes or social and mating interactions. Other studies describe schooling behavior and sexual segregation where the males and females occur separately in different areas. But not much is known for their mating habits. Although the mating of some shark species has been substantially documented and filmed, this species has remained mysterious. Understanding reproductive behavioural patterns and locations is paramount to inform management and conservation organisations in order to best protect them. This paper describes the first full sequence of a scalloped hammerhead mating event based on a single observation at Isla del Coco National Park, Costa Rica. July 2009, Isla del Coco. Mating sequence, stage one. Open water encounter. A female is approached by a single male high in the water column at approximately five meters. Stage two, pre-copulatory biting. Oral grasping of the female's pectoral fin by the male. Stage three, insertion and copulation. The male inserts into the female followed by vigorous thrusting of the male pelvic region. Stage four, free fall. Both individuals stop swimming and start a vertical descent until approximately 40 meters deep. The male can be seen here thrusting while both sharks keep their mouths agape. Stage five, Separation. The male releases the oral grasp of the female's pectoral fin and claspers are withdrawn. Stage 6. Post copulatory following. After separation, the male closely follows the female for a period of time over 30 seconds. From video footage and other observer information, the scientists made a number of findings. They observed constriction of the male shark's siphon isthmus, which forms part of the siphon sac. This is a picture from a previous study showing the siphon isthmus clearly inflated during mating. But what is a siphon sac? Male sharks have a pair of siphon sacs that run along the length of the abdominal wall. They are associated with the claspers, which are the male reproductive organs. And yes, they have two. The siphon sac function has been studied and debated. After years of shark dissections and research papers, some things, like shark sex, are all a bit of a mystery. But some believe that its function was to use seawater to flush the sperm of another male out of the female before mating, in order to increase their own chances of reproducing. In this case study, however, there was only one male shark around. Another theory is the sperm propulsion theory, which states that the function of the siphon sacs is to help push the sperm quickly into the female using seawater like a pump. 
At one point of this observation, a substance of a different density was released by the female, supporting the idea of siphon sacs as a storage reservoir for seawater and sperm propulsion, leading us to finding number one. Finding number one, the observation supports the sperm propulsion theory. Finding number two, mating events for the scalloped hammerheads occur in open water adjacent to these oceanic islands. Females and males could possibly pair within the aggregation, but then escape for a little privacy in the waters off the island to mate just off sea mounds in deep water which allow for longer freefall and thrusting periods. Finding number three. The fact that the couple was found away from the aggregation supports the hypothesis by Klimley in 1985 that schooling behaviour does not have a reproductive role. Finding number four. The current's water flow could possibly be aiding respiration of actively mating hammerheads. In the video, the swimming of the sharks becomes restricted because of the male's grasp. The female kept her mouth wide open while the male performed quick water suctions through his mouth while holding on to the female. This area is known for strong currents and the fast moving water would likely aid their respiration as they free fall. Finding number five. The researchers hypothesized that the reproductive season for the scalloped hammerheads in the tropical eastern Pacific occurred between the months of July to October. This period is when large schools can be found around the island. Female sharks have been recorded to leave these oceanic islands during March to April to pup, most likely to go to mangrove areas along the mainland. To find out more, satellite telemetry and or population genetics could be used to better understand this endangered species. Thanks for listening. We'd like to thank the authors of the paper, the South African Shark Conservancy and the Women in Shark Science team. See you next time.